Hello, and welcome back to the Resiliency Ninja podcast. I'm Allison Gray. I'm your host. And today is Facha Fridays. And of course, Facha is the noise that a Resiliency Ninja makes as it swats problems out of its way and succeeds anyway, no matter what is happening in your life. And today we are going to talk on a part of the building your army of allies message that I've been sharing for a lot of years. And we're going to dive in to how do you build trust? And more importantly than that, we're actually going to talk about the four points in time in a relationship when you can maximize and control, or at least really influence the level of trust that other people have in you. And of course, trust is the essential element of a profitable relationship in business. If you are looking to sell something, if you are looking to get advice, if you are looking to connect authentically with someone, if the trust is, is down, if, it, if it's hurt in any way, it's going to be harder. And chances are somebody will choose your competition over you if you can't develop trust. The thing is, is that trust is a very much an ambiguous term. And so it can be, it can feel like, well, how do I actually achieve it? And that's what this video is about. I'm going to share with you four moments where you can influence the trust level in a relationship. And I, I created this system, this sort of framework, when I was going in to speak with one of my clients. We were doing a workshop on building your army of allies and creating profitable relationships to sell business. And they are in the financial sector. So of course, trust is something that is imperative. I mean, you can't have a financial transaction without a trusting relationship. And so they really wanted me to go deep on the trust. And I, I thought, well, if it's something that you can only influence, but you can't control because it's really somebody else's perception of you, what are the moments in time that matter most? And so I've created four of these touch points and there are other places in the relationship where trust is important, but these are the four that I think are the most important. And please leave a comment, let me know, do you agree? Are these the four most important opportunities you have to influence trust? So first, let's go. We've got number one is your reputation. Before somebody even meets you, they are going to decide if they've heard about you, if you are going to be trustworthy or not. I remember when my dad was alive, he used to say, I wouldn't trust that guy as far as I could throw him. And it might be an old <laughs> sort of saying, uh, I don't hear it a lot anymore, but if you're in the financial sector or if you are uh, somebody who has a business, a product, a service that somebody needs to buy from you, you do not want that being said about you. Because if somebody is thinking that, chances are they're going to say it. It's interesting, even people who don't gossip, when there's a trust breakdown in a relationship, that word will get around more than any other topic in, I think, human behavior. Because most people, like me, I'm not going to tell people if somebody screwed up or they dropped the ball on something, whatever. But if I feel like somebody is not trustworthy and I know somebody who I care about or and trust is going to engage with them on a professional level and I know there's a trust problem, that's when I'll step in. And I'll say something, and I know this happens with other people as well. I'll say something like, you know, I just, I really want you to check references first. Or I had an experience that led me to believe that maybe that's not the right place to put your money. Or, you know, whatever the case may be, or just know what you're getting into. Those types of warnings only come when there's a trust breakdown. So your reputation is absolutely imperative. So how do we develop a great reputation? Well, that's all about your personal brand. And every interaction you have in public will either add to, subtract from, or reinforce the opinion that people have of you. And collectively, that will create your reputation. That's why it's important to act as professionally as you can when you're in public. Now, we all have bad days. 
myself included, where I think, oh gosh, why did I react that way? Or why did I say that? Or why did I get so worked up about that? That's just being human. But we need to act in as best a way we can in the most uh, authentic, joyful, thoughtful, professional way that each of us can each and every day to help influence your reputation. So first one touch point is the reputation. What do they hear about you before they even meet you? Your second opportunity for influencing the level of trust that people feel about you is in your point of initial introduction. How engaged are you? Are you making eye contact? Do you have a firm handshake? All of those little pieces of the puzzle. Are you dressed appropriately? Uh, Even if you're casual, do you look like you're put together or do you look like you just rolled out of bed and came into the office? Uh, You know, we've all had those days. I get it. Uh, But you want to be sure that you're making the best first impression that you possibly can. And this isn't about having great hair. This is about being engaged in the interaction. How many times have you met somebody or been introduced and you can tell they don't give a shit that you've met them and they're maybe playing along, but really they're looking over their shoulder to see who else is more important who's coming to meet them at a networking event. Or they don't remember your name, which is fair. That's another topic altogether. But I'll tell you the the number one way, well, I don't want to say it's the number one, but it, the top three ways that you could lose trust at the moment of introduction is by using a cheesy elevator pitch. Here's why. Now, if you haven't heard of an elevator pitch, uh, we'll do another podcast on that. So that's why you need to subscribe. Do you love how on for child Fridays, I just throw that in every now and again, just right in the middle. I'll tell you, it's a good idea to subscribe and it's appreciated if you give a five-star review and write a review. (laughs) Just saying. Okay. Let me back up here. Elevator pitch. Essentially what it is, is that when somebody says to you, what do you do? You go into a value proposition statement that often is really adjective heavy. It generally is delivered in a way that makes it feel very uncomfortable for the giver, not forget about the receiver. And it rarely answers the actual question, which is, what do you do? And I've heard you know, crazy answers to this question. Uh, People say, oh, well, I help bridge people's financial reality with their, uh, their hopes and dreams. And I'm like, oh, do you work at Disneyland? (laughs) Like, come on, people. No, you're a financial advisor or, and you know what? I know people tell me, well, people think it's boring when I say I'm an accountant or I'm a financial advisor or I sell, uh, you know, this widget. But what do you do? (laughs) You're an accountant. You're a financial advisor. You sell a widget. And here's the thing. When it comes to trust, as soon as you start adding like a, a halo of bullshit around the answer to the very first question somebody is ever going to ask you in a relationship, you are risking the amount of trust that that person is going to have in you. I would take a boring answer that is concise, accurate, and understandable about what do you do over a flowery, you know, explanation of your value proposition and spewing on for a minute uh, or two to answer the question anytime. Because here's the thing, the boring, succinct, true answer will build more trust in a relationship than the crafted elevator pitch. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have to be able to deliver your value, you absolutely need to, but there's a time and a place. And within first, you know, three minutes of meeting somebody is not the place, it's not. And I wish people would start using the elevator pitch 
in the right way at the right time. And it is not at the beginning of a relationship. I don't know if you're watching me on video, you know how passionate I am about this. If you are listening on the podcast, I, I hope you can hear it in my voice. Please stop using the elevator pitch because it kills trust. I'll do another video on how what's a better way to incorporate all of that information uh, and another podcast. If you subscribe, you'll get a chance to get that. Or you can get it on my online program that teaches all of this plus more in four and a half hours of video content broken into little itty bitty pieces and worksheets, et cetera. It's my profitable networking program online. I will put that in the comments because I think that's really important, especially as we're talking about this. So let's get back on track. We've got your reputation is the number one point of influence for your level of trustability. The second is that first time you get to intro someone uh, when, you, when you're introduced to someone. So you want to be engaged, you want to be authentic, you, you want to avoid using a cheesy canned elevator pitch that is uh, not going to work, just for the record. Okay. The next time that you can influence trust is throughout a relationship based on your consistency of delivering on promises. Now, these promises, the big ones, like I'm going to send you that on this day, a proposal or a client delivery, or I'm going to show up on time. Those are the, the simple ones. What is really valuable are the little offhanded, oh, let's do that, or oh, I'll send you this. How often, and I, hey, by the way, I'm guilty of this too. I'll be in an event, I'll have a conversation with someone, and I'll say, oh, you know what, I'm gonna send you a link to that article, or uh, that technology that I love, that I, I'd love for you to share with you, or a link to my online program, and then I don't do it. Have you done that where you say you're going to do something and then you get busy and you forget to do it? So how can we counteract that? Well, one thing I've started doing a long time ago, I actually hear somebody's card right in front of me. I bend the cards that I need to follow up with because that means there was something important that we talked about that I need to follow up on. See, look, here's another bent card with notes on it on what I said. So that's an, another touch point of being consistent in your activity and consistently following through on the little promises that you make to people throughout conversation and the big ones too. The fourth is, I don't know, I, I don't want to rate these as more powerful because I think they're all equal, but it is an opportunity for you to shine. Your fourth opportunity to build trust is how you react when something goes wrong. Because let's be fair, something is eventually going to go wrong in a relationship, especially in business, right? Uh, maybe customer service doesn't deliver. Maybe you can't get them, if you're in the financial sector, you can't get them approved for a loan. Uh, maybe you drop the ball in an area. Maybe somebody else on the team does or technology doesn't work. It happens. And I've found that people are really understanding when something goes wrong. What they're not understanding about in what will hurt the trust is if you don't react in the right way. And so I've sort of thought, what are, what are the best ways to react? Like, how can you react when something goes wrong? Well, often what will happen is, you know, the fight, flight, or freeze. So a lot of people will, they don't want to deal with the mess ups. So they ignore it. And I hope it's going to go away. Here's the problem. It doesn't go away. The trust, if you flight or freeze, it, you can't get it back or it takes a really long time to build it back. Instead, you want to fight. You want to show up. You're not fight, obviously, but you want to show up and say, I'm all in. I'm going to fix this issue. And then what do you do? Well, I think number one, take full responsibility. No passing the buck, just accept it. Even if it wasn't your fault, it doesn't matter. Do you want to be rich? Do you want to be right? Be right. Uh, no, you know, don't be right. It's not about being right. It's about 
making that other person feel like they're going to get somewhere in, in that they're feeling like you are making it right. So number one, accept responsibility, even if it wasn't your responsibility. Next thing, you can offer an explanation, but you can't make excuses. Actually, uh, just recently, I, I messed up. I forgot to do something. It was not a huge deal, but it is a huge deal because it's somebody who is a really quality prospect. I promised to drop off some books uh, before he went away on vacation and I put it in the wrong day. So I think in the email, I actually said, I've realized my mistake. I've called the office. I've missed you. I'm so sorry. Completely my fault. No excuses. What I did was I actually put it in uh, the wrong day in my calendar as a reminder. And that's what happened. So now I've taken responsibility, no excuses, but offered an explanation just so he's not thinking I'm completely flighty. Third thing is now you've got to take steps to make it right. And in this case, before he gets back from vacation, I will have my books delivered and I'll figure out something uh, that he really likes that I can um, you know, add to it, like a gift basket or something. And then the next thing is to share the learning. What did you learn from this going wrong? I think people love to see growth. They love to see that next step and it, it increases the level of trust because you are, you're showing that there's forward momentum and then, and I think people will accept that things go wrong. What they want to see is how are you going to deal with it and are they going to continually go wrong or, and you're going to therefore repeat these mistakes or are you going to make it right? So if you have messed up or somebody on your team has messed up, please step in, take responsibility, give an explanation, but not excuses. Do a next step to try to fix it, make it right, and then figure out what are the next steps in the learning. Because those opportunities when things go wrong are when you can accelerate the trust building opportunity. It's in the trenches where we build trust. Now, if you've seen me speak at a conference, you know that one of the things I do is I lay out and I, I actually draw out the the uh, how a relationship evolves. How do you go from unknown to a loyal client and referral source? And one of the things that so we'll talk about all of this along the way, so your mini bond and how are you showing up, what's your reputation, all of that. And then one of the things I inevitably will say is you can't have loyalty without longevity. Can't have loyalty without longevity. And so trust, I think we, we have an initial reaction to trust. So we either our gut says, oh, my spidey senses are up about this person and I don't, there's just something off. And, or, so there's that side, or it's like, yeah, I really like this person. It's a good vibe and I want to get to know him or her a little bit better. That, that piece, so when we continually reinforce by consistent action, and reputation building and every time we see somebody following through on what we promise and then when things go wrong because we know they will reacting in a very professional way that's how we create long-term trust like true essence of you trust where you have loyalty because uh, trust is one piece, loyalty is where the magic happens. When your competitors try to swoop in and find your clients and take your clients, but they are not going anywhere because they are loyal to you. And they're gonna be your cheerleaders and sending you referrals. You can't do that without trust. And hey, I'm gonna do another podcast on referrals. See, I come up with these Look, I'm writing it down for those of you who can't see me on the video and just listening on the podcast because we, uh, you know, getting referrals is a whole other conversation. So I will do that on another episode. But uh, so I hope that helps the four moments in time when you can best influence the trust in a relationship in business. Let me know, is there another point of contact with, uh, that I haven't thought of in the comments below? Let me know what when do you think you have the most control over developing trust? Which of those four is most important to you? Uh, please 
subscribe. I know I joke about it throughout, <laughs> throughout the uh, segments, but it's so important to get subscribers and to share this message. I am out there putting my heart and soul into doing these podcasts and I hope you're loving them. And the only way more people are going to find out about it is if you share, if you leave a review, uh, write a couple sentences, uh, give me a recommendation on LinkedIn. And by the way, don't, don't be shy connect with me outside of this podcast and the video, send me a message on LinkedIn and uh, we can connect. So uh, until next time, embrace those obstacles. If you're going through them, you know, uh, that's just, that's just life and you can succeed and be joyful anyway. doesn't matter what's coming at you. So until next time, ciao.